Hi, welcome to the first of many screencasts you're going to watch this year in AP Physics. Watch these screencasts. You'll do well on the test. If you don't, well, you're on your own. Let's just get going here. So one of the question types you're, you're definitely going to get on the AP Physics test more than once is uh, to be told, hey, uh, we've got this uh, relationship here. This turned out to be the uh, equation for the period of a spring. Uh, and they're going to say, well, what's the new value of T if we double M? Now, you're, these are called proportional reasoning problems, and you're going to get them. So let's just start doing them day one of AP Physics. How about it? So here's one way of thinking about it. All right, if both variables are in the numerator, in other words, there's not one in the denominator, then we have what's called a direct relationship. If one gets bigger, the other one gets bigger. In all of these cases, if x gets bigger, y gets bigger, and if y gets bigger, x gets bigger. They're both in the numerator, so that's going to be true. So in this case, if y equals, and we're just going to use a as being some sort of a, a, a non-changing constant. Uh, so if, if, if it's y equals ax, then what that means is if you double y, you double x, and vice versa. <clears throat> On the other hand, in this case, they're both the numerator, so it's definitely a direct relationship. In this case, what's going to happen is uh, if I double x, then y goes up by a factor of 4. And in this case, if I double x, y goes up, but it goes up by a factor of, of 1.4 or square root 2. But in all cases, it's, it's going to go up if 1 goes up. But I could also have what we call an uh, inverse relationship, and that's when I have a variable in the denominator. So if, if, if one of the variables is in the denominator, then the two are going to be inversely related to each other. So what we find is, in this case, if, if x gets doubled, well, y will be reduced to half of its original value. In this case, if it's y equals a over x squared, if I double x, then 2 squared is 4, so this is going to be 1 fourth of its initial value. And if it's uh, y equals a over root x, then if I double x, then y is going to reduce to 1 over root 2 of what its original value is. Uh, so in proportional reason, another thing to keep in mind is, if, and this is something that a lot of students have a hard time wrapping their head around, is if it's a constant, if it doesn't change its values uh, in the problem that you're given, then it has no bearing on the proportionality here. So if you look here, if I say uh, y equals ax, now, now a could have a value of 4 or a could have a value of 20. Very different, right? However, if the question is how does changing x affect the value of y, well, look at this. Let's just say uh, x had a value of 10. Well, okay, in this case it's 40, right? If I was to double that, so instead of 10 I had 20, it goes up by 80. Look, doubling this one doubled this one. But if that a value was 20 instead of 4, uh, I'd end up with, with uh, uh, 20 times 10 is 200. And if I doubled x to 20, I get 400. It's still doubled. The point I'm making here is this. If, 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 a, vari if, if a constant or, or a variable that doesn't change and remains constant, I can simply ignore its effect on the proportionalities. It doesn't matter to me. And that's really important to understand this next thing we're going to do. Uh, in order to, to solve a problem like this, this period of the spring problem, we'll be presented with something like this and they'll say, like, how much would the length have to change in order for t to double? Oh, how do I approach this? It's, it's actually quite simple. The trick is I wanted to simply isolate the two variables that matter and, and, and just get rid of all the other ones. So, so here's how we're going to approach this. So the first thing we're going to do is this. We're going to look at the equation that's appropriate for the question. Okay, so the, the period of a spring equation. And we know that both T and L are in the numerator. So it's going to be a direct relationship. That means if one goes up, the other one goes up too. Now here's the next step that a lot of students seem to have a little bit of trouble getting used to at first. And that is, notice I'm switching over from an equal sign to a proportionality. This actually this is an alpha, but it's the closest I could get with my computer. Okay, so we're, for our purposes right now, we're going to assume this means is proportional to. So T is proportional to, now look at this. 2 pi is never going to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it equal to 1. g in this case was something that didn't change. Now, it, 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 perhaps it's a variable, but we're going to say, you know what? In this case, it didn't change, so I'm going to set it equal to 1. The bottom line is replace any value that remains constant in the course of the problem with the number 1. Then it makes it really easy because I, I, this can simplify to simply t is proportional to the square root of l. And all this other stuff that was kind of confusing me and making me think it was an issue, it just goes away. And then I go, all right, well, if I want to know how is L proportional to T, I want to get rid of the square root. So I square both sides. And what I see now is L is proportional to T squared. So if, if, if uh, the, the, I want to produce a value of 2T, 
I double T, two, two squared is four, so that means L would go up by a factor of four. Why did it go up? Because it's a direct relationship. They're both in the numerator. Let's try another one. Uh, in this case, I have a, an inverse relationship. One is in the numerator, one is in the denominator, okay? So if the question was, well, how much would Y change if X was tripled? So I take my relationship here and I say, all right, I can tell it's an inverse relationship. As one gets bigger, the other one gets smaller. So if X is tripled, I'm expecting Y to get smaller. But by how much? Well, what we're going to simply do is we're going to switch to a proportional and we're going to take anything that didn't change. In this case, 27 isn't going to change. And we're going to replace it with a number one. Anything that doesn't change is just going to be a one. And I say, well, really what that tells you then is Y is proportional to one over X squared. So if X is tripled, that's three squared, right? That gives me nine. So Y is going to be proportional to one ninth. So that means my new answer is one ninth of the original Y. All right. Uh, what value of X would produce a value of two Y? That's another type of question they might ask me. So how do I get this to be two? I right, said so to solve this, I need to isolate the variable where I have to find this case, I want to isolate X. So I write my equation. I switch it over into a, uh, a proportionality. I take uh, the numbers that the values that don't change, that remain constant and set them equal to one. And now in this case, I'm just going to rearrange it so it's for x. So in this case, I want to get x isolated. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x and then divide by y. By the way, just so you know, it's a very convenient thing. If I have uh, something on one side of the equation and the other thing is in the denominator, you can just swap them. All right? And then I say, well, I, really want, I don't want no x squared. I want no x. So I'm going to take the square root of x. So I have to take the square root of this side, which gives me x is proportional to 1 over the square root of y. Uh, and therefore... Uh, if I want to know uh, what happens if I have 2y, well, I replace this with a 2, and x is going to end up being equal to 1 over root 2 of what it originally was. All right, and the same thing here. I look at this, okay, so what if a is doubled? Now, no, notice in this case, a uh, is just directly proportional. So if I just set this equal to 1, right, because this one didn't change, what I see is if I double this, I double that one, okay? Uh, and if I double X, then I say, well, okay, uh, I'm going to set this equal to one. All right. So that means it's equal to root this. So if I double this, it's going to go up by a factor of root two. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll try to keep all of my, uh, screencasts, at least this short, probably is a good idea to go back and maybe take notes from the, uh, the associated, uh, uh, presentation document.